Hey folks, this is Kalani. Have you been hoping for some more cooldowns to get taken back off the GCD? Well, you found the right place and the right time. The dev team has announced that they're going to take a bunch more abilities, especially cooldowns, back off the GCD if they can't make them feel good on the GCD. Which, let's be honest, that's most of our cooldowns. So we have that to talk about, and there are also some interesting changes to potions coming in Shadowlands, which are going to reset the playing field. Before we jump in, be sure to pop by our live stream sometime over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday at 12pm PST, and we always love chatting with you wonderful folks. So I hope to see you soon. Okay, let's talk global cooldown changes first. Sadly, they haven't decided to revert the entire thing as a whole, but significantly more abilities have been brought back off the GCD, so you can use them while using other abilities. Blizzard also gave some reasoning behind their choices, so let's talk about that first, and then we'll get into what abilities are actually affected. Here's the actual blue post, I'll leave it up on screen for a little bit, and I'll give you a link in the description and comments below so you can read it at your own leisure, but this essentially boils down to they're taking burst cooldowns off the GCD where the cooldown itself doesn't feel impactful to use. That was kind of their first attempt at making the GCD feel better, to add additional effects or animations onto existing cooldowns to make pushing that button feel like it's doing more than just increasing your future DPS. Some examples they gave of abilities that do this well, Avoid Eruption, Metamorphosis, Stormkeeper, Blade Flurry, and Ascendance. Spoiler alert, if the dev team thinks a cooldown is already doing okay, it's not coming off the GCD. But I guess they just couldn't make it work work with everything, so they're resorting to rewinding the clock and undoing some of the GCD changes, which should be good news for all the players out there who want to macro a few things together again. Our current list is a tentative list, apparently, which means it could be expanded upon in the future, but it looks like the dev team are in fact listening. These are more changes based upon player feedback, and that's really what has made this testing cycle significantly different from previous expansions, but almost every class will see at least one ability changed, so let's get through them. For the Death Knight, both Pillar of Frost and Empower Rune Weapon will come off the global cooldown, which means Frost Death Knights should be very happy. If you want to, you can now macro them together again, or macro them to other abilities, or macro them to your trinkets, or anything else macro related. Sadly, no news for any unholy spells or blood spells being changed, but if you keep your fingers crossed, you never know what could happen. I wonder if this would create any kind of advantage for Frost in the long run, but let's move on. The Druids have a lot going on here. Berserk, Celestial Alignment, Incarnation Chosen of a Loon, Incarnation King of the Jungle, and Ravenous Frenzy have all been taken off the GCD. So that's pretty much every major DPS cooldown for both DPS specs, and even one of the Covenant abilities for Druids as well. All in all, Druids should be quite happy with this development, at least if they didn't like the GCD changes to begin with. For the Hunters, Aspect of the Wild will be moved off the GCD. That's actually all for Hunters, which seems kind of strange. From Blizzard's little definition of the abilities they want to take off the GCD, Bestial Wrath should fit the bill as well. Thankfully, True Shot is already off the GCD, so every Hunter spec will have at least one major cooldown they can use at any time, but there's still a bit of work to be done if Blizzard wants all cooldowns to feel impactful. For the mages, both Arcane Power and Icy Veins will be brought off the GCD, which means every mage spec's major cooldown will no longer be restricted. And with the new Rune of Power talent that causes you to drop a Rune of Power every time you use your major cooldown, that's two spells for the price of one, with no global cooldown triggered. That's actually incredibly strong for setting up your burst windows. Arcane is going to have a blast with this for sure. Monks will be happy to know that Storm Earth and Fire, and Serenity if you pick that as a talent, will be moved off the GCD as well. Sadly, that's about all the good news Monks got so far in this build. We were kind of expecting some more Monk changes, uh, but we don't have anything so far. Never mind, let's continue on. Paladins will see their wings and every variation come off the GCD, so Avenging Wrath, Avenging Crusader, and Crusade will no longer trigger the GCD. That's going to make it much easier and faster getting into your rotation to get some of those stacking effects rolling. In addition, the Holy Avenger talent will be moved off the GCD as well, which means you could macro these two cooldowns together again if you really wanted to. Priests don't have too much to write home about. Spirit Shell, the new talent for Disc Priests, will be moved off the GCD, and that's about it. 
Then again, the vast majority of pre-CDs that you could want off the GCD more or less already are. I think the only exception would be Rapture, but that just got a little power word shield baked into it when you use it, so that's probably their justification for leaving it on the GCD. But Guardian Spirit, Desperate Prayer, Leap of Faith, and even Power Infusion are already off GCD, so maybe they're actually doing pretty well. As for the Rogues, Adrenaline Rush, Shadow Blades, and Vendetta are all coming off the GCD, which falls in line with the burst cooldown dealio. I imagine when this is all done, significantly more cooldowns will be off the GCD than are actually on the GCD, which is definitely the opposite of what we've had for most of BFA. Shamans don't get much either, the only change is to Ancestral Guidance, which is a talent. I think they're mostly in a good spot as well, and it seems like Blizzard thinks the cooldowns which aren't off the GCD are good enough to be on the GCD, so we'll have to see if anything else changes here. Warlocks will see the Dark Soul Instability and Dark Soul Misery talents come off of the GCD. This doesn't surprise me too much. The other cooldowns, which are mainly big demon summons, look cool enough to be skipped over in this first pass anyway. That's probably their justification there. They're also very powerful, and if we can macro the Dark Soul cooldown into them, well that's just going to be even better, isn't it? And then last but not least, Warriors. Avatar and Recklessness will be coming off the GCD again, which brings us back to almost where they were before all of the GCD changes. I think moving cooldowns onto the GCD in the first place made them feel less impactful and cool, but also it just slowed down combat, which is already bad enough at the start of an expansion thanks to the lack of haste. I'm happy the dev team has realized that they can't make every button do something when you push it to alleviate the problems the GCD caused, and the best course in this case was to remove several abilities back off the GCD. I'm glad they made this choice. Personally, I think it will make combat feel a bit more fluid, and at the very least it gives you complete freedom to push that button exactly when you want to. Now the latest build also introduced some pretty significant changes for potions. Pretty much across the board, you just won't be able to use any old potions, or any potion that hasn't been created from the Shadowlands Alchemy book in Shadowlands. This includes the old invisibility potions, the old speed potions, swim speed potions, debuff clearing potions, you name it. If a potion was semi-useful before, it has probably been marked as ineffective above level 50 in Shadowlands. So you can still use them for content before Shadowlands, but when you cross over that threshold and ding 51, none of these potions will work for you anymore. The most significant potion in this list is the Sky Step or Lightfoot potions. Both of these potions provided a huge speed boost, 150% increased movement speed. The real kicker here is that there is a new speed potion in Shadowlands that you can use, but it's back down to 70%. And when you get to level 60, you can't use any of the old ones, so you're going to be limited to that 70% potion. This will only affect a small percentage of players who are really taking advantage of the crazy speed boost, but they probably did this for a completely different reason. When new potions are introduced in an expansion that do the same thing as some old potions, it devalues the new herbs in an expansion because chances are they're not going to be used to make a new potion if they've got plenty of the old potions still kicking about. I mean, why would anyone make or buy the new invisibility potions if they could still use the old ones they've been carrying around in their bags for the last couple of years, right? With the new potions being the only ones you can use in the expansion, that means the new herbs are the only ones getting used. That keeps the value higher, which means you can make a lot more easy gold with herbalism without having to backtrack to older zones. I think it's a good move for balancing purposes too. The dev team shouldn't be shackled by the previous expansion's recipes and potions, so creating a level cap allows them to reset what is available to max level players. I know quite a few fights were cheesed with the living action potions and the speed potions, so maybe the dev team just doesn't want to take those into considerations when making new content. Either way, if you have a stockpile of any of these potions, I think the best advice I can give to you is to try sell them before the expansion launches, because they won't work at all in Shadowlands, and the only market you're going to have after that is for old content, and I don't think that's going to be big enough. But that's all we have for this quick video. What do you think of more abilities coming off the GCD? Are there any spells missing that you would like to see removed from the GCD that haven't been yet? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. If you want to explore what's left of the beta, have a chance at one of those Mythic Jane amounts on Saturday, or maybe even help us get ready for Shadowlands, you can find us over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday at 12pm PST, and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel 
channel right now, and if you ever wanted to be included in the long list of names at the end of every video, a subscription on Twitch is the easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have Amazon Prime too, so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who subscribed on Twitch already, and to our supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, well, now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good looking and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.